Again, welcome to the webinar. I am Rick Rockershausen, Vice President of Sales at Grid Connect. In the background there, who you saw briefly, Ho Chi Xu from uh, ATOP Technologies in Taiwan, uh, and Tim Holland, also from Grid Connect. And um, Sam Leong uh, will be our presenter today. Hello. Uh, hi, Sam. Great. Uh, our topic, as you can see, is how to pick um, the right industrial switch for your network. There's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of a lot of considerations that uh, need to be made before selecting a switch. And I think Sam is going to walk us through all of those options. Um, Sam, if you could advance the slide one for me, please. Sure. Okay. So during the webinar, I know I asked as you were joining to, to introduce yourself in the chat, but if you have a question uh, during the webinar, please use the Q&A um button at the bottom of your screen if i think it's at the bottom for everybody um and we will attempt to answer those questions uh in situ at, during the webinar we have a, a team of folks here to try to answer questions for you um also uh if we don't answer them we'll have a q a session at the end so um so if we don't uh answer your question um in by in the chat in the q a session sorry uh we will we'll attempt to answer it there at the end uh the webinar should be about one hour in length including the q a uh it is being recorded i think you can go to the next uh, screen yeah oh not yet okay that's fine um it is being recorded so everyone will get a link to the recording so if for any reason you need to um to leave the webinar, you'll still get the recording. We will also share out all of the slides that Sam's going to present today. Uh, I think I covered it all, Sam. So I think without further yep. ado, uh, I will also hide my face and uh, leave it all to you. Thank thanks you. Thanks. Time. Thanks, Rick, for the introduction. Um, all right. So uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the webinar. And uh, like Rick introduced, I'm Sam. Um, basically, I'm a product manager uh, from ATOP Technologies, um, also a solution specialist that is handling or accountable for our North American account. And on the webinar, we also have a uh, Pochi, also from ATOP. He's our senior product manager from uh, for all our switches lineups. So um, both of us are based in Taiwan, um, for me specifically, I travel back and forth the U.S. and Taiwan. Uh, ATOP Technologies itself uh, is a company from Taiwan. So today, we hope to be able to give you a comprehensive introduction on how to pick the right industrial switch. So without further ado, I just want to take a couple minutes to talk about ATOP Technologies, our expertise, and our experience so that uh, Whatever we uh, share from you is based on our experience and what we have observed uh, on the industrial space over the decades. So um, basically, ATOP Technologies, we have three business units, industrial networking, pick to light, which is the logistic handling, material handling, and contract manufacturing. But today, we're only going to focus on industrial networking. So basically, um, all the... Uh, industrial networking product, we designed them and we manufactured them. We have been doing it over 34 years and we have case studies over the globe. Um, and then we designed them in Taiwan and we also manufactured them. Of course, when we talk about industrial networkings, uh, some of them could be very critical infrastructures that we are uh, deploying our devices into. So uh, they have to be compliant and, that, and they have to be tested. So uh, this is just a slide to talk about our uh, regional offices. And we have clients in respective regions. So uh, I think I will just uh, summarize this marketing slide in few sentences. If there are some things that we pride ourselves on, um, I would think that it would be our ability to uh, respond quickly, agility in our customer service, and also uh, in the industrial space, there are a lot of times um, you need some customization, especially when uh, some of our clients, they are working on project basis. So uh, we pride ourselves on our engineering expertise 
to be able to deliver some of the unique features for certain uh, applications. And this are the, oh, I, I think I skipped too fast. So these are the uh, industrial networking solutions that we manufacture. If you look at the subtitle, uh, the industrial networking solutions could be applied to small projects all the way to big projects. You can talk about like one switch, two switches, all the way up to hundreds of switches and then thousands of switches. So that is where our uh, network management system uh, that comes in. So basically it will be very important if you are working on a big project, you need a software to be able to manage your networking product and devices uh, to do troubleshooting, et cetera. So the, uh, we do networking switches, we do wireless, wired, position timing, et cetera. But today, since we are focusing on the network switch, uh, I just want to give you some introduction on uh, what are the uh, managed switches, um, uh, switches out there. It has a, a managed switches, managed switch, and then you have a different combination because eventually cost or budget is very important in the product. Sometimes you need to use uh, entry-level switches. And then the, you when, when you are aggregating more data, you need gigabit switches in some of the smart cities project, or uh, even in the machineries as your core switch. And then you also have different switch that is needed for a respective vertical market. They have to be certified, et cetera. So these are how the devices look like, the devices that we manufacture. I just want to show you real quick. I'm not going to dive in. So this is the 4G, 5G solutions that is used in the industrial space. And of course, they also have to work on or support uh, industrial protocol. Modbus is the big one in the US. And then 61850 could be the, uh, because right now the USA is talking about retrofitting or standardizing the substation protocol. So 61850 could be one of them. So some of the applications that you need to, uh, that our uh, device has been deployed to uh, substation, smart grid, automation, smart city, railway, marine, oil and gas. And uh, okay, I, my introduction took a little bit too long, but uh, right now let's dive in on some of our uh, most important agenda. So first I would like to introduce what is the difference between industrial and commercial grid. Um, basically, I think uh, they are two different ways to solve different problems and to be applied in different applications or uh, having uh, different features. And then next we are going to talk about how to pick, right, pick the right industrial switch. And in this presentation, I also hope that I will be able to, I will uh, cover some of the level, layer two switches and then layer three switches, what are their functionalities, when to use which one of them, and then just go over some of our ATOP offerings real quick. And then we will talk, uh, go to Q&A. But uh, speaking of Q&A, if there's any question like what Rick said just now, if you have any question, you can just uh, shoot questions into the Q&A uh, box. All right, industrial and commercial grade. So, um, I think when we took tech, uh, take a look at substation, railway, oil and gas, the common denominator is that uh, it is going to be very hot in the operating environment. So this slide is just to uh, illustrate how hot does it get. Like on a sunny morning or afternoon in Taiwan, this is about 92 degree Fahrenheit. If you are a dad or parents, you will be able to relate. If your baby gets a fever, it's about 104 degree Fahrenheit and warm milk, 158. And this one, last one here is a coffee, serve hot from the Starbucks. It's about 185 degree Fahrenheit. And one uh, very important features on the industrial product is that it is able to work reliably in harsh environment. So basically it is going to be able to uh, this are some of the tests that it will be done is uh, IEC 61000, uh, test level three or higher. There are a couple levels, but what it means is that test level three is that um, it will test the EMC, electromagnetic compatibility, surge protection, electrostatic discharge, et cetera. 
and then the temperature that we talk about. Uh, this is just a common guidance. Of course, with different switches, sometimes they will have different range. So this is negative uh, 43 degree Fahrenheit up to 185 degree Fahrenheit. And we also talk about the reliability. So in some of the use case, um, the redundant features could be very important. For example, uh, they have a dual power supply design because a downtime in the industrial operating environment or uh, sometimes you call it operation techno uh, technology, OT, it is uh, very expensive, the downtime. So some of the products, it will have a dual power supply design. When one goes down, another one will come back up. And also fanless design. Uh, this is to ensure that the device itself will have a long lifespan. If it is using a fan design to uh, dissipate the heat, it will have a very short uh, lifespan in a way where um, when it is running, it will introduce or bring in a lot of dust that uh, cuts down the lifespan drastically. Okay, um, in the OT space, uh, operation technology space, the maintenance and cybersecurity could be another features that you need to start to look at. Um, for um, some of the industrial products, or at least our ATOP, we have five-year warranty. And most importantly, the product cycle is a 10-year product, uh, product cycle. So we have some clients, uh, before they buy, buy the device, they will always ask, how long can your uh, product last? And then what will you do? Uh, do you just call it an EOL? There's no replacement. And then uh, you know, it is a problem. So this is something that you need to bear in mind when you want to implement a project. And then uh, built-in software safety feature. Because of the uh, hacking incident has been going, more and more, I saw a Q&A. Uh, yes, uh, hi, Kashif, uh, we have this, but I think uh, we can answer at the end of the Q&A. Thank you for your question. We, we do have that. And later we're going to show you the uh, switches in our portfolio. And then the, okay, well, how do I post this? All right, uh, and then building software features, we talk about uh, the cybersecurity is a concern. So right now, um, the industry is talking about the uh, uh, SOP where from the manufacturing process, the design process, you need, you need to be compliant or certified on the group level and on the product level. So there is a certification. You are going to hear more and more about 62443. So this has a different parts. Uh, for example, it has different stakeholders, like uh, the dash four is the one for the uh, equipment vendors that you buy from. So if you buy from a vendor that is certified with 62443, that means their devices, uh, or sorry, their group level or their company, their manufacturing processes are being uh, certified and being checked that is compliant. And they also have other parts that talk about the uh, product specific safety features that is um, suitable use for certain applications. All right, certification and tests. Um, so we talk about industrial grade, of course, uh, these are the other concerns that will come in in the environment where there will be a lot of uh, shock or uh, interference, et cetera. So search protection is another one. ESD protection, shock protection, you can look at the class, usually they are class higher than the commercial product. Okay, um, right, let's go to how to pick the right industrial switch. So um, these are some of the uh, deciding factors when you want to pick the right industrial switch. Uh, you want to pick like, uh, what is the type of the switch that you want? What is their applications? Like, are you going to use a manage, uh, like manage or manage? So usually more features doesn't mean it is good because it comes with a price. And uh, what is the network speed and port density that you will need? So these are important uh, during your planning stage, you need to decide because eventually like five years down the road, you might want to upgrade. Uh, you, might, you might have more devices coming in. For example, you have, if you are in a factory, uh, you have more machines, you know, if you don't have enough port right from the start, how, how are you going to, uh, uh, handle the upgrade, things like that. And then scalability, 
uh, how many sites do you have? Do you just have one site or do you have multiple sites? So you need some certain features that enable you to connect your devices from afar, things like that. And PoE capabilities. Um, so basically, um, I will talk about it later, but uh, in a layman term, um, so basically the switch is able to power some of the uh, device like CCTV or a router, things like that. So that will save you uh, some maintenance cost. And uh, how many switch do you have? How do you uh, manage them? So uh, does the device that you buy from, do they offer management tool? And then uh, how do you do the upgrade? And then what's your budget? Also, are you doing a new project or uh, are you just upgrading from an existing project? Because eventually if they are existing devices, compatibility could be an issue. What are the redundancy ring that is being run previously? And then right now you want to buy new devices. Uh, so you need to see if the new device can support their ring. Because some of the uh, brand that we know, they run proprietary ring. So if you buy other brands, then that could be a concern. And uh, vendor support and documentations. So we talk about different type of switch. Um, some of the switch, their configuration is easy. Some of them are plug and play. Some of them could be more sophisticated than others. So documentation and vendor support becomes very important when you face any issues. And also, if you have decided your switch already, you want to do a test and do a pilot run, will your vendor uh, be there to support you? That is another thing that you need to take a look at. Uh, uh, yep, because uh, if we do have a modular switch, but not all switch are modular. So I, am, I, I can show you later, how does a modular switch look like? Yeah, I think, yeah. All right, so uh, let's get back to the presentation, like uh, the, uh, what are the types of switches? Basically, we will, um, divide them into three categories, a managed switch, like managed and managed switch. These are the three bigger categories. The unmanaged switch, um, I think is quite self-explanatory. Some people also call them dumb switch. So it basically they just do a basic data switching, plug and play, no configuration required. However, when your site is getting more complex, you started to want some monitoring, you don't want to go, go, go to the device itself to check if there are any problems. You want some monitoring or redundancy, but you don't mind the uh, uh, convergence rate being a little bit higher. Uh, convergence, convergence rate means when something go down, it will take certain time to come back up for the network to come back up. Uh, RSTP ring supported device could be something that you can look at uh, with the two, 300 milliseconds uh, convergence rate. And then it also support SNMP, enables you to do some uh, monitoring and so also logs to see what happened and a simple GUI. Um, and then we have a uh, managed switches. As you look at, uh, we talk about some of the uh, deciding factor, right? The, the scale and then how crit crit critical is your network. And um, if you want to have a reliable and redundant network, eventually you need to look at higher or uh, advanced switches that support uh, more sophisticated rings. It can bring down your um, convergence time down to 30 milliseconds. It is uh, suitable for high performance or deterministic and low latency uh, specifications, uh, applications, sorry. And then uh, there are also uh, industrial specific features like what Kasif uh, asked just now, like modular switch, uh, so maybe, uh, for example, some of the substation, um, using substation switch as, an, as, as a sample, some of the module, they need to support like uh, HSR, PRP, you know, those things. Uh, it can be a module that you can swap on the switch itself. Those are the very advanced product. And then some of the advanced product, they also have a dual power supply or different range of uh, voltage input to be used in uh, different applications. When I show you our ATOP portfolio later, you will be able to see uh, basically switch is like a different combinations. So you pick whatever you want. Um, 
based on your budget. Okay, and this is just a sample to show you how different type of switches like manage, uh, unmanage, and manage are being used. So you can see that uh, from the left, this is the unmanaged switch. It is being used to connect the few devices. Uh, we call it access layer. And the speed usually is about uh, 100 uh, megabit per second. And then after that, you will have a layer two, uh, layer two and layer three, these are managed switches. You can see that uh, in the center or in the middle is aggregation layer. So it aggregates the data from the access layer. So it is running at a higher speed, one gigabit per second. Um, and then you will have uh, layer three switches. So layer three switches is the core layer. It is uh, getting the data from all the site and pass to your SCADA or your IT. So if one gigabit per second, this, this actually has the option of one gigabit per second, uh, but it is not enough, then you can look at 10 gigabit per second. So uh, this is just a reference on, uh, you know, when you take a look at your cost, basically the number of the uh, access layer is going to be high. You don't want to, theoretically, you can also use, use managed switch, but uh, your cost is going to be very high. And then the, another thing that you can take a look at is that on the access layer, the, this is our eight ports are managed switch. And then the, this is our eight port layer two switch. And this one on the core layer, this is a 28 ports. So basically the uh, port density at the layer three will be higher. And this layer two and layer three, it will support much more features uh, than the unmanaged switch. And so layer two and layer three, they can run some redundancy ring, uh, they have uh, different types of monitoring features, cybersecurity features, so on and so forth. And if you see, take a look at this, the center here, the blue line, uh, these are the SFP that I, um, that is being used, uh, that brings me to my next slide. So it enables the long distance transmission. If you're, uh, you have two sites, uh, they are very far from one another. So basically you can use a SFP to enable this long distance transmission. It connect your switches at a greater distance with fiber optic. The reason fiber optic is being used is that it is free from EMI compared to copper. So um, it actually can connect uh, 550 meter all the way up to 80 kilometer with this SFP port. So you need to, if you have these requirements, you need to start to take a look at the switch that is with, uh, that comes with an SFP port. Of course, they will be a little bit more expensive. And you also need to buy this, uh, what we call a transceiver to plug in the SFP port. And then the, on the cable side, it will have, uh, you have the options to choose LC, SC and SD. These are the one that is commonly being used. And what are the designing factors uh, on your SFP uh, transceiver? The distance. Uh, these are the things that when you buy it, you need to take a look at the data sheet. Those are very important depending on your applications, uh, like the distance. What is the fiber optic cable that you need to use single mode or multi-mode? So multi-mode is the one that is for shorter distance, but it is cheaper. And uh, for the longer distance, I think 10 km and above, I, I could be wrong, but uh, I think it's something like that. For the longer distance, you need to use single mode, but it will be more expensive. And what is the speed transmission, data transmission speed that you need? What is the communication wavelength and connectors that I talk about like LC, SD, SC. These are the one that uh, is mentioned on the data sheet. And then what is the environment? Can it support a harsh environment? And then the serial interfaces, serdes are the common one. But uh, there's one thing that I would like to highlight on the compatibility issue. Um, it is always recommended, like if you buy switch from, for example, ATOP, uh, you can check with us what are the compatible SFP that we have tested. Because based on our experience, on uh, based on uh, some of our customer experience, like uh, some bigger brand, um, switch, they have their own proprietary SFP. If you buy other brand SFP, it could be incompatible. So you will have that uh, compatibility issue. So that's one thing to take note. All right, and then PoE capabilities. 
So when you want to buy a switch, uh, what uh, uh, some sometimes some PO, uh, some switch it comes with a PoE. What PoE does is that it is able to power uh, the device, like I said just now, power CCTV, um, power different devices. Right now they have a different standard. Different standard enables different uh, power. So the 802.83 AF supports like access point, IP phone, and then you will have a higher, the one that is with higher output, 30 watt, alarm system, speed camera, uh, speed or IPTZ or dome camera, and then video IP phone. And on right now, uh, there is a newer standard coming out. Uh, ATOP, we, we do have this product as well uh, that is going to come out really soon. What this does is that it can even power your POS system, G digital signage, and uh, some of the high, higher or advanced uh, access point and POS system. So uh, basically, this uh, when you want to connect to the end devices, you need to check like what is the power consumption that is needed so that you can choose the specification respectively. All right, finally, we can move on to talk about some of the layer two switches functionalities. Like I said just now, um, layer two switch, they actually have more uh, sophisticated features. On a bigger category, connectivity is the one thing that you talk about, that we talk about connect the data. Um, there are a lot of terminologies, but uh, I will just go on and highlight the uh, big category. So all of these functions actually enables the data switching. And then the next one is the reliability. It wants to run, you want to run some redundant ring so that you can, uh, um, the POE means uh, power over ethernet. That means through the ethernet port, you will be able to power and send, uh, you will be able to send power and send signal to uh, the end device. But the end device has to be a power device. Uh, we call it a PD, power device. Usually, yeah. Excuse me, Sam, sorry. Uh, we'll, yeah. um, we'll answer the questions that are typed during the session. So you don't need to pay attention to them for now. Okay. Uh, and then if we don't answer them at the end, uh, you can chime in. So uh, okay. I, we'll, we'll, we'll try to answer all these questions in, in real time. And I apologize for the interruption. No problem. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. All right. Um, so the redundancy. Um, redundancy is another very important features because we talk about the reliability that you uh, need to have in the very timing critical. You know, you cannot have a afford a downtime. So these are the rings that you need uh, that it's supported on the layer two switch. And then it also needs to have diagnostic. Otherwise you cannot monitor what is going on uh, or what is going wrong. And security, security features is another one that is uh, big on the layer two. And also you need to be able to uh, manage it. Uh, can you also uh, manage it in uh, the account, you know, role-based account, uh, role-based access, control, and then uh, can you control over CLI? Those are the features that is needed. And some of the other uh, industrial or application specific features, you can look at like a 1588, this is PDP, PDP timing or uh, Profinet, you know, uh, SMTP, HSRPRP. Uh, HSRPRP is a redundancy ring that is needed in the uh, substation project. It, uh, allows zero packet loss. All right. And then, the, so we take a look like at this, just a high level on what layer two switch uh, have uh, support. And then uh, we need to look at, look, look at uh, what is layer three switch and how is it different? So just to recap, uh, a managed switch, just plug and play, no configuration, basic connectivity. So managed switch, layer two and layer three, they are both managed switch. So they have the connectivity, they have the diagnostic uh, security and uh, the other uh, management uh, redundancy that we talked about. However, layer two switch, they only work on MAC address layer. 
if you want to have an inter VLAN communication, then you need a layer three routing switch. So uh, what's a VLAN? Just to uh, give you uh, some explanation. So VLAN enables you to isolate network by function instead of location. Let's say you have one factory, but then you have different business units. You have uh, admin, you have operators. So you, you want to separate this uh, network into smaller pieces for management purposes. Uh, some of the other um, uh, advantage in doing so also is security management. You know, you can uh, just, uh, just like, uh, you do want different functions to be able, business uh, functions to be able to see the data. And then you want to be able to uh, call it like fault isolation. Um, so basically you will be able to identify the problem easier once it gets into a smaller segment and traffic segregation. You can reduce the traffic being flow within the uh, VLAN to improve the performance and also network mon monitoring. So um, this is just a um, slide to uh, show you how uh, different switch uh, put into places. So this is a smart factory. And on this slide, we have a, a manage switch, layer two switch and layer three switch. So um, if in a smart uh, factory context, you will have a factory. So inside factory, you will have a, uh, your production line. Maybe you have sensors or actuators or whatever. And then uh, it can be connected to the manage switch and it is uh, running on Profinet, then you will have a managed switch that handles the Profinet packet data. And then uh, this is the layer two switch, all right? And because right now your scalability is getting a little bit bigger, you have different sites. So you also need the layer three switch to be able to do the inter VLAN that I talked about just now. So uh, right now you have this rack mount switches, 28 ports, that is the call layer that is connected to your warehouse. So in your warehouse, you could have some AGV that is running on, then you can, of course, you might also have a IP cam, et cetera. And right now, um, there is also office building for your admin, right? Uh, then you can have a, another layer three switch to bring all of this uh, connection together and they can, they can run a redundant ring. Um, currently COVID hits, and then uh, there will be some people that, that is working from home, et cetera. So they want to access your network within this space. So what are they going to do? They are going to be uh, using a VPN tunnel to connect back to your VPN server to access all this data. So you can see that uh, from a smaller context, you don't really need a layer three switch, but as it that gets bigger, uh, then you need to plan to use a layer three switch because uh, the benefits of layer three switch is highlighted in my next slide. So uh, layer two switch is uh, using uh, routing using Mac, but layer three enables you uh, with IP addresses. It can aggregate um, network from different subnets. It can enable like multiple broadcast domain. So you can see that layer three is something that uh, work on a higher scale on bigger scale. However, there's also a comparison that is often being done between layer three, should I use a layer three or should you use a router? So uh, layer three, because it needs to connect cable, right? So it is being used uh, by a LAN connections most of the time. Routers where uh, on the other hand is suitable used on the uh, wide area network connections. Um, the benefits of using layer three is that uh, it is a hardware-based uh, forwarding decision, so it is faster. Uh, router, on the other hand, is software. But router sometimes, uh, you can see that uh, layer three actually has some, some sort of uh, router functions within it. But um, depending on your application, sometimes you still need to use router due to like uh, it support like NAT, firewall, tunneling, and IPsec. So uh, on a, a local area network, typically you are connecting to a lot of devices uh, with cable. So the port density is going to be higher and it has smaller routing table compared to router. So uh, router on the other hand, low port density, and then uh, it has a bigger routing table to support uh, more connections. 
All right. So uh, switch. So basically, uh, layer three switch. Um, on uh, the just a summary, layer three switch actually consists layer two functions, but it support routing. Uh, to be uh, some of the routing features could be like static routing, dynamic routing that work on the IP layer. And it support like a multicast and layer three redundancy protocol. So uh, just this is just to highlight that it is being used for local area network connection. All right, so uh, this is just a very quick highlight um, on layer three switch. Next, I would like to show you our ATOP offerings just to uh, let you see that um, usually when people buy switch, what are they going to look at? Number one, pot density. So uh, we have a pot density, like this is four, five, six, all the way up to 16 port. And then um, there are different uh, housing. We have plastic housing, metal housing. Uh, this is due to the, uh, usually is due to the budget uh, the customer has. And some of this switch, uh, um, so, so for example, we have the three series, which is the slim switch. It can fit right in into your cabinet if you have very limited space. These are some of the problems that uh, our clients usually have. I have limited space. Do you have a slim switch with five ports? So, you know, it also depends on how much space do you have on your cabinet. Do you need a rack mount? You need a dean rail? How do you install it? So those are another things that you need to look at. And then the, um, also the temperature rating is a little different on some of these too, right? Yes, because when you look at the plastic housing, obviously it is not going to be able to withstand the Starbucks coffee temperature. So that's why you need to use a metal housing. All right, um, but here is a table that highlights like what is the different combination speed sub, uh, that, that, that a switch has. Uh, usually all these ports, sometimes, you know, they have, a, they, for example, this one, even though it's a four, uh, five port, it has four uh, fast ethernet port, which is the 100 megabit per second port. And then you have one fiber port. And then uh, the design could be smaller. It could be uh, very compact, could be slim. And sometimes uh, you also need to look at the compliance that it support Profinet. If you are going to install in a Profinet, um, in, a, in a factory that's running a lot of Profinet, uh, devices, obviously, you, you need to have a device that supports uh, 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 Profinet, right? So, yeah. All right. And then uh, advanced switches. So uh, advanced switches could be something like uh, light manage and manage switches. So we have the, uh, the port density four port all the way up to 20 port. Now you can see the difference where you see this is up to 16. Usually advanced uh, switch, they have more and more ports for the uh, upgrade or, you know, as a core layer or aggregation layer switch. So we have the products that is uh, supporting uh, Profinet features, um, even though pro support for Profinet, but there are uh, different requirements on the Profinet. Sometimes you just need the uh, uh, QoS, quality over service kind of uh, features. That means you can prioritize Profinet packet or sometimes you need the CCP. So this is the Profinet certificate that is compliant. So those are the things that you need to take a look at, like what's the devices that you're working with. And then um, the speed in a factory automation, um, you will also, sometimes you will need about the PoE or PoE plus that I talk about. You want to connect CCTV, IP phone. And sometimes some, uh, there are some additional features like the 12 volt to 24 volt PoE booster features. Uh, so these are the, for example, uh, if you have a PoE switch, usually their power input is about uh, 40 plus to 57 volt. But with the PoE uh, booster, then um, this is the power input, but it has a capability to bring up your power to power the devices. And then manage switch, switch for uh, smart cities. In a smart cities applications, you will have uh, different requirements. Other than the pot density, you need to take a look at, um, of course, the speed is one thing, right? In a smart city, you were started to have like a, a device that is being uh, uh, far from one another, could be in the KMs or, you know, 50 KM, et cetera. Then you need a fiber SFP port. 
uh, and then the PoE ports because you need to power different devices. A CCTV could be a lot. Um, I think uh, in the past uh, on the tunnel projects that we work with, there are uh, a lot of requirements on PoE switch. And also some applications need you to have a NDA, NDMA TS2 certificate. Uh, so these are the certificate for uh, traffic control, traffic lights, uh, emergency road signs, uh, walk or don't walk signs, things like that. And you can see that uh, because of this smart city, it has a lot of devices underneath, then the, the uplink speed will be higher, like 10 gigabit per second. Um, but also, uh, I think currently we are talking about 10 gigabit uplink uh, could be a little bit too much and there's a budget concern. So uh, some companies, uh, even like us, we uh, started to have a 2.5 gigabit uplink, uh, which is coming up soon. All right, and then uh, 61850, these are the 61850 compliance switches or certified switches that uh, perceive us just now. So these are our switches within this line um, that is being you know, that's able to use in this uh, applications. So you can see that there's a PTP, TC, PTP, BC. These are the um, timing, uh, transparent clock and boundary clock because um, I also talk about HSR and PRP when I talk about substation applications. So all of this, are, oh, so is here, sorry, so is here. So basically these are the one that enables zero packet loss. Uh, just to highlight the, what makes substations very different is that um, um, it need, why, why it needs to have a zero packet loss and it need to have a perfect timing is because the uh, timing is very important for the event logging, troubleshooting specifically in the uh, substation because I think any uh, if too much of a latency it can cause a lot of a uh, devices error it can be a lot a lot of a uh, problem to the operations because um, and the losses could be huge especially when you're involved uh, substation applications and then the power input you can see that uh, usually the substation switches they will have different range of uh, power input, BDC, VAC, and things like that. Some, some of them even need like a PoE. So these are the one that we have. And we have a layer two switch, layer three switch, and with different speed. Yeah, and uh, this one, this are our modular switch, but the picture is a little bit too small. But if you uh, take a look closer, that is four compartments here. So uh, some of them can be swapped out and swapped into another module that you want. So basically our module, we sell them as an accessories, you know, like a Lego, you can uh, buy and then put it in for different uh, functions that you, uh, you are looking at. And uh, this is the oil and gas. So oil and gas has a requirement where you need to have an ATEX uh, certify, or sometimes you also need to uh, be compliant to, to certain ATEC certification because um, it is being used in an explosive environment. So they uh, they have a different certificate or different class that they need, they need to be compliant. And some of them also need to use an IP67 switch. So we have an unmanaged uh, five port and then the, all the way up to seven port and managed switch and layer three switch. So when you look at a IP67 switch, uh, this is how it looks like with the M12 connector. So like the ATEX, so railway also could use some of this um, IP67 switches. And the certification you look at, when you look at this, it's going to be a lot of different numbers, different uh, wordings. But uh, if you look at the project requirement, usually it will tell you uh, what are the things that they need to look at. So then you will go to the vendor's uh, data sheet or crawl their website to see if they have a uh, application specific um, product. So uh, like I just put together, um, just put together layer two, layer two switches. So you can uh, see that uh, smart grid needs like a different type of switches. 
And then the automation, you have different type of switches at different speed. So these are our product offerings. Of course, some of them, uh, they can be used in one, uh, they, can be, they can be used in multiple uh, uh, vertical markets like this, uh, RHG7528, RHG7528. So, yep. All right, q and I'm 45 minutes into the presentation. I hope we have enough time for q and Wow, that was right on about that. Uh, I'll just make a couple comments um, for folks here. I, I know Bob uh, from Midland, um, Bob Merrill, asked, uh, wanted to know when to use managed versus non-managed switches for their machines. Um, and I would say that uh, th there's a saying that uh, I've heard in some of the seminars that we do on Profinet, and that is if... Uh, you know, you can um, use a non-managed switch, but you will wish you use a managed switch because it gives you the flexibility. And also an important uh, thing is troubleshooting. So with a managed switch, you can set up a mirror port and do things like Wireshark and other things like that uh, to troubleshoot your networks. Uh, with just an unmanaged switch, there's no way to mirror the traffic so you can figure out what's going on. Um, so that's to me, one important thing. And then the other the other one, I think, is something Sam touched on uh, about uh, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, the ability to gather information from the switch about link loads and, and things like that to know, um, you know, is the, is the network overloaded on certain, certain links and do we need to redesign or move things around in order to do that? So uh, to me, those are the big advantages of managed in, in an industrial uh, kind of environment. Um, and then on SFP, uh, I don't think you showed it, but it's also possible with those pluggables to use um, fast ethernet or gigabit transceivers too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, um, so that's sort of a modular switch in a way too, that you can pick the right, <laughs> you have two open ports, you can make them copper, you can make them fiber, you can make them whatever you want. Yeah. So there's that. Other questions? And if you'd like to raise your hand, we can turn you on if you want to voice a question or if you just want to type it in the Q&A. We're happy to answer your questions. Let's see. Does your switch have VPN functions? Can the switches be monitored through your cloud and dashboard? Mm, so, so far, I don't think our switch has any uh, VPN functions. We only have them at our routers or on four G five G gateways, uh, but your next question is that can the switch be monitored through the cloud and dashboard? Yeah, we do have our network management too. Yeah, so we can uh, monitor definitely monitor it so that is on the management level or uh, configuration, uh, it will be easier for the management perspective, maintenance perspective. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah the the management software is really important especially for larger um installations so you can, yeah you can keep track of uh you know even firmware levels of the devices if you need to push new firmware and uh, of the switches i mean you know so um and and do all get all the diagnostic information like sam was talking about um uh, so gary is saying in the chat that uh the, the switches will pass vpn uh, traffic. Um, the router, you know, initiates the VPN tunnel, but once it gets into the local network, of course, yeah, you're in. So the VPN is sort of outside of the scope of the industrial network itself. Other questions? Okay, another question from Ahmad. Is it possible to have two routers connected to the switches simultaneously? I think the answer is yes, but I think then why do we have to have two routers? I think it depends on what are you trying to build. Right. What What is the network architecture you're going for there? Because normally, yeah. yeah, normally you just need one router, right? Because you just want to go go outside of the network. Right. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. So maybe there's two separate routing environments or something, but it would be possible. Multiple subnets. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Keep it touch. Bye bye.